الشيطان الليل الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على خير بشرية محمود الأحمد المصطفى الأمجد حبيب إله العالمين بالقوس المحمد سلام الله صل على محمد وعلي محمد وعلى بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الميامين سلام we have reached to the last discussion in the series of 12 majalises, 12 discussions that we had been doing it for the last 13 nights. In fact, we started the night of the first of Mahadwa. Alhamdulillah, we have reached to the final stage of our journey in this Muharram. And inshallah, we'll continue until the Arbaeen and in Safar as well, occasions, whenever the occasions will happen. But every Saturday, inshallah, we will continue discussing them because both, both Muharram and Safar are the most sacred of the sacred months for us. We always believe that these months are so important that we must remember Imam Hussain these two months more than the throughout the year that we remember in our sense. Yesterday we talked about it quite a lot about the journey that was taking place and I will continue talking about the journey and the occasion that has happened during this uh, you know journey of of Bibi Zainab Salamullah with Imam Sajjad being the leader of this caravan. Uh, one of the Noha Khan, uh, the, the poetry reciter in Pakistan, has uh, said very nice poem. There was a one caravan that Imam Hussain took it from Medina to Karbala, and there was another caravan that took from Karbala to Sham, which was taken by Bibi Zainab. So there were two different types of caravan. In that caravan, everybody was around. Imam Hussain, everybody with Imam Hussain, everybody was hopeful that some solution would be found from this. And they were not expecting that much of uh, brutality and that much of gruesome tragedy that occurred on the 10th day of Ashura. My point is that, that what next? When, if we do believe that our religion uh, Ahl al-Dashir, um, Ahl al-Bayt is alive religion, not dead religion. Like Ahl sunnah they believe in just Quran and Salah and Hajj, you know, Sayyam and just the observing the occasion. Yes, we also observe it. But for us, Imam Hussain taught us to be active in many ways to benefit for the benefit of the community for the benefit of the mankind at large be active in many ways and be politically active so what is next post karbala post muharram this is the biggest question is being asked are we able to connect with the society in a bigger way what is the bigger picture are we connecting to the people, especially our Shia people around the world, around the globe, that who are they, how many are they, how much they are suffering? Are the people from the north of the world are connecting with the Middle East, with the south of the world? Are the Lebanese Shia connecting with the uh, Far Eastern Shia? Are there any conferences? Are there any meetings? Are there any you know, collaboration. The Iranians are doing some sort of an active work throughout the year. But the total outcome of the struggle of Imam Hussain must translate into, as the Quranic ayat says, that if the Muslims of one part is suffering, it is important for the Muslims of the other parts of the world. 
to take care of them and to realize what type of Muslims they are. What is the problem? And of course the sufferings are too great. If you look at the Yemen, if you look at the Afghanistan, if you look at the even Pakistan, and many other nations, even you know, situation in, 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 in Iraq is, is dire. People are contacting, collecting money to feed the poor orphanage women and children of Iraq. And I said, it's a rich country. Why government cannot feed them? Why the government unable to look after the uh, orphanage and widow those who died, their husband and their uh, men who died in fighting, protecting the nation? Why can't the government look after them when they have to be individual Maulanas that are collecting money, you know, just to feed them? Yes, it is highly recommended and a highly uh, matter of thawab if you, if you can help those. But the responsibility of that, the nation's responsibility falls upon the responsible government to look after those people, social welfare system, to create a social welfare system. In Bahrain, the struggle is still going on. Majority, despite the fact that Shias are a minority, uh, majority, they are unable to uh, find the solution for, them, for their future. Then they can govern themselves because they are under huge pressure from the South. And the way the a royal family in Bahrain work hand in gloves with the Saudis, they are unable to do it. And if you raise your hand, well, we have a brother Dabistani here, his children has been killed just because he was a political actor. So political activism is something that Imam Hussain taught us, that we have to be politically active. If we are not politically active, then you know, we have no reason to, you know, commemorate or to follow, to follow in the footsteps of Muslims. Our revolutionary spirit come from the revolution of Muslims. And our spirit should be alive. Our revolutionary spirit should be revived by Muhammad. And this is the purpose of that. Not just Majalises as I see in London and I see in UK and, and all the other countries. Great length of money and management goes into organizing nicey nicey uh, Majalises, good food, good tea, everything is very good. And people have created as a social gathering. The masses and the revolutionary spirit of those gatherings are zero. People go home and people continue that. They have completed their ritual. They have done their, which their forefathers have been doing that in their, in those households or in their uh, Husseiniyas and Ambarga. But what, what is the connectivity with the reality of the world we live in? Because each reality of the world is important. We take out the procession on the street to tell other people how effective are we? Do we do any survey? Did we do any feedback? That okay, we shout slogans of Ya Hussein, Labbaik Ya Hussein on the street, but half people have seen, half people did not understand. Some people said, "Who's Hussein?" We don't know. Um, and then no, no feedback. Yes, we made effort. We made you know a lot of hard work for doing that. And going on the streets, what, what is the net benefit and the effect of that on the mankind, on the people which are? So the post Karbala, this time in Muharram, post Karbala teaches us to be active, proactive. In whatever field you are, specialist, in whatever field you are, specialist. If you are in medical field, a lot of our brothers in medical field, be active in maybe engaging in conversation with those who know nothing about it. In a tea break, in a lunch break, if you're having it, that we are in Muharram, it is suffer, it is happening. And point, point them towards Karbala. 
Tell them what Karbala is all about. Tell them that the people have started walking for Arba'in already now. In a few, few, few weeks' time, they will reach Imam Hussain. People are walking now from the remote, far distances. People are making arrangements for traveling. So all of these activity must be propagated, must be explained to those who might get affected by the story of Imam Hussain, who might say, yes, it is a real event in the, in the history of Islam that we must pay attention to it, that we must listen to it, that we must show our respect to Imam Hussain and their family, and you never know that who will then come to Imam Hussain, to Islam, to become the part of the Shaqsha. And that's how our people have increased in numbers. Majority of the people, I know quite a lot of people who were Ahl Sunnah, but they are now converted into, uh, they were still Muslims, they're doing the same thing. All Muslims do the same thing. But those people who would know and develop interest in Imam Hussain and the tragedy of Karbala, they would then come closer to our Akita, our situation, how Shia calendar works, how Imamat works, how many days in Ramadan Shia people commemorate Amir al Mumineen Alayhis. What are the teachings of Amir al Mumineen that makes you wiser? And stronger because the Amir al Mumini is Shaja. It's something that we inherited in our blood. That how strong we should be to face the trouble, to face the problems. The bravery of Amir al Mumini, the bravery of live like Ali, die like Hussein is the phrase. Somebody has made that phrase, very clever phrase. Live like Ali, die like Hussein. What does it mean by that? Ali lived in such a way, like this. And Amir al Mumin has said that think about your life as if you are going to die tomorrow, but expect to live for thousands of years. Human life is all full of complications. The modern life is full of complications. Whether it's personal relationships, whether it's marriage breakdown, whether it's uh, family problems, this, that, the other, employment problem. Now we are facing another problem in Europe, of war. War is not a nice thing. More people are now bent upon meetings going on in Denmark to, to you know, pour more weapons to uh, Ukraine and give them more arms, capability, capability and everything. Where are they heading? They are heading towards disaster. Little they know that they are already, the news are spreading about the nuclear plant that exists in, and there had been some incident of that nuclear plant has been damaged. It is a frightening thought, if you think about it, if that nuclear plant has been bombed, then each other parties are blaming them. Russians are blaming to Ukrainian, Ukrainians are blaming to Russians. That they have attacked anybody. It's not in their interest to save Europe. It's, it's because they are in trouble. Their people are dying, their country has been, you know, obliterated in the war. So for them, they're saying that the more people get affected, the better for us. The economy of the European economy will go down in this warring situation. So, so, so where, are where are the voices, voices of those people, those people who, like Muslims? Where, where are the voices of the follower of Ahl al-Bayt in the mainstream, in the mainstream of that action? I don't hear any active Maulana in, in the UK doing big, big lectures of intervening there or lobbying the politicians and saying that Ahl al-Bayt's point of view is this. We are in Muharram. We would like to engage with you. What is your policy towards the peaceful solution 
for the nation and to protect you, the nation. Because we are heading towards disaster. And in any given time, and in any given situation, you will find that mankind faces the problem big, either the personal level or at an international level and a bigger national stage. We responsible people of Anil Bay should engage in order to do our best, our bit in the teaching of Imam Hussain. Imam Hussain was an active member of his society. He thought about his grandfather's nation. So, so being an active member of society because it's something that we have learned from Imam Hussain. Because he was not thinking about himself and his family and his close companion. He was thinking about a grand picture. What is the grand picture? For people to be responsible for the Ummah. Of course, it's a very complicated Ummah. Today's Ummah is not the same Ummah as Imam Sen's time does. It's gone beyond complication. Nations have been divided. Nations have been created to divide and further divide. And very few are respecting the tradition of Ahlul Bayt, the nations who are following the Ahlul Bayt, so-called majority Shah nations. But in the effort of the peace in the world and peace for the mankind and the betterment of the mankind, because if the resources are combined, if people unite, if people can support each other, the prosperity will happen. If we are divided, if we are fighting among each other, then all destruction will continue. And this is the teaching of Imam Hussain that Imam Hussain wanted to unite people. He was very much active. In today's language, a political activist he was. Yes, of course, he was a Vakta Imam. He felt Imamat the responsibility of being an Imam. That I am the grandson, my grandfather has created this thing called Islam. The hands in which it should be remain in those hands, those who are responsible. Doesn't matter how opposition created another picture altogether by pushing it aside. As far as they pushing it all the way into the jungle of Karbala. You know, at the time of his brother, complication is started. At the time of his father, Amir al Mumineen alayhi salam. So, opposition did try their best to push them away. But, alhamdulillah, it is because it's the blessed system of Imamat that continued. Somehow, with the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Imam Sajjad came back and he continued the duty of Imam and then handed over to Imam Baqir. Yes, within, within the community, within the society, within the shahat, even the split heart. Imam Baqir's son, uh, uh, Imam Sajjad's son, Imam Zayd has been followed by different people. But actually, Muhammad was with Imam Baqir. So these divisions continued up to the time of Imam Asqas. We are living in the time of Imam Mahdi. If we say that he's alive, he's watching, he's seeing, that means that our religion, as opposed to the other branches of 71 branches within Islam, is alive religion. We are not the dead version of Islam. That do not follow after a few Imams. Certain people do not follow. The, even Shia people do not follow us. Don't follow after six Imam. Imam Jafar Sadiq is the last person. So for them, they have created their own system. But that system is just limited to their own community. 
our system is much superior, much stronger, much global in their vision. In its vision, I would say that we are concerned about the global situation. Concerned about the global situation is something that Imam Sad has taught us. That so much so that you are concerned up to the point if you have to face the death, you walk into that. And people who have been sacrificing and becoming a martyr by doing dua, that Allah give them a martyr. Recent situation like, you know, Qasim Salabani, every time he used to go to Karbala, I've been reading quite a lot about him these days, ever since his passing. That he was praying to Imam Hussain that Imam Hussain give him a shahada. <coughs> because embracing shahada is the ultimate, ultimate paradise in the hereafter. And this is the reason we learn from this journey that this painful journey that continued after Karbala by Bibi Zainab Salamullah that took over 20 days, historians have written. And in 20 days, over 20 days, reaching to Kufa, Kufa uh, from Kufa to Sham, and over 20 days is a long time. You know, when you reach to that, you realize that that situation was very difficult situation for the children and the women who were traveling on this journey. It was a long one. It took over 20 days, this historians have written quite correctly. Women and the children were exhausted. Their suffering was great. Quite often the children would faint under the scorching heat and fall off the camels. The mothers would scream. Imam Zan al Abideen and Bibi Zainab would go looking for those children. Sometimes they would find them by the roadside, barely alive. And there were occasions when they were discovered too late and they passed away those children. Our fourth Imam would dig a grave to bury the dead children along this journey. An historian revisited, revisiting uh, the route. Many times they have visited the, revisited the route. A few years later discovered a large number of small graves on the side. What does those graves say about the children who passed away? So once Bibi Zainab Salamullah looked at the camel on which Bibi Sakina was riding, Bibi Sakina was not there. She looked at the other camels, Bibi Sakina was nowhere to be seen. She panicked. Where would Imam Hussain Darling's daughter would be? She asked Shimmer to, you know, unite them with the, that little baby, little girl, Sakina. At first, Shimon responded with his whip. They were all being tortured and whipping around. Now, this is the little daughter of Imam Hussain who could not make it back to Medina. And this is another sad aspect of that. That how many children we lost, including the daughter who suffered. On the day of Ashura, she suffered by burying the looters, snatching the earring from her lobes, ear lobes have been broken, damaged, because they were snatching it. They were not asking them, give me the, your, your earrings. No, they would go and snatch it. Regardless of this, her ear lobes would be damaged with blood, torture. And this Sakina somehow reaches to the prison of Yazid. And in that prison of Yazid, which was open, uh, prison, not roof. There was no roof on those prisons. If you look at the structure of those prisons at that time, it was very difficult to protect yourself with sun or with rain or with the weather. That's how they were being kept there. And this little girl would not be able to make it back to that. And she used to ask when she looked up to the Birds who would go in the evening, she would ask to, to her uncle, 
Imam Zain al-Abideen, he would say that, Uncle, where these birds are going? I would think they're going to the birds go to their trees. And she would ask, when would we go? Do we have home to go to? And Imam Sajjad would say, yes. My child, our time will come when we will be released and we will go home. But that was not meant to be. Bibi Sirina passed away. One day she was crying too much, looking for her father. And what they did, they gave the head of Imam Hussain to become a to console herself. It was too much for a little girl to bear. All the arduous journey, all the situation of Karbala, and then to face this hardship of prison. And she passes away inside the prison of Yusuf. Imam Sajjad dug the grave and puts the very simple coffin of his own clothes. Stories have written, there was no arrangements were being made. And he dug up all, like other children, he was digging up the grave. He dug up the grave for her and buries her inside the grave. In the prison of this. Those who have been to Chow, they know that the Sakina and Zainab are side by side. And therefore, you must realize that these places are flocked by millions of those people who follow them today. But my point is, what is beyond Karbala? Returning back to my original point, that our responsibility and duty goes beyond day to day and beyond country. That we must be proactive in telling the world that this is a sacred month. It has its own significance that no other month have in the month of Islam. And particularly face very strongly those people who spread lies and do this kind of merry making, happy new year for Islamic. No happy new year. Not a single Muslim country declares as a national happy new year. Yes, we do celebrate it in, in Rabi al at the birthplace or birth time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imam Jafar sadiq alayhi wa Those are the time for us after suffer when we come out from this holy place. So face those people who spread normality. For us it's not a normal life in these two months. Continuously we keep talking about the tragedy of Karbala. Repeat after repeat. Repeat after repeat, the detail after detail. Today, these days, we are discussing the tragedy in the jungles, in the journey that has been taking place. A very arduous journey, but a difficult journey that has created a vacuum in the hearts and minds of those who would re realize how difficult it was and how miraculously they survived the 22. 20 days, over 20 days journey to reach alive those who were able to reach Allah. Delicate children were not able to reach Allah. So this is the last discussion that we are having on the season. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our ibadah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a tawfiq and help and a chance to commemorate Imam Hussain. Next year, if we are, inshallah, Allah. May Allah and Imam Hussain and his mother, Bibi Fatima Al Zahra, accept our efforts to commemorating and remembering Imam Hussain and his sister and the entire family who sacrifices on the day of Ayyub. Sallallahu alayhi wa